All right, the recording has started. Um, other guests will arrive uh, as they come in. So, but I want to go ahead and get started so that we don't lose any time. So, um, welcome you guys to uh, our session today. Uh, we have with us Dr. Kurt Stanberry from the Maryland Davies College of Business at the University of Houston downtown. Uh, before we begin, I would like to share with you just some uh, housekeeping uh, ideals that we have. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be made available to you after um, the presentation today. There is also live captioning that is happening right now. If you will look in your chat, there is there are directions uh, pertaining to that uh, to uh, access live captioning for this event. I ask that you keep your mics muted at all times, except for the speaker. Um, and then any questions that you have, please place in the chat. And then at the end of the presentation, time will be allowed for you to ask questions of uh, our uh, attendant speaker. Um, also, I'm going to be placing in the chat the uh, code of conduct that is um, provided to all attendees um, so that I actually just to um, bear this in mind as well. There you go. And I think that is, oh, and then at, at the end of the conference today, there will be a survey that will be coming to you in your email, the post-conference survey. I ask that you complete the survey um, as, at your convenience, but please return it. Um, that will help us in planning for uh, next conference. All right. So without further ado, um, I present to you Dr. Kurt Stanberry. Kurt Stanberry has held the PLM Endowed Professorship in the Maryland Davies College of Business at UHD for the past 10 years. He is also a licensed attorney. He has co-authored two OER textbooks, Business Ethics and Entrepreneurship, as well as two additional textbooks for traditional publishers, McGraw-Hill and Southwestern. Prior to UHD, he taught in California State University system. And as a visiting professor in four overseas locations, London, Bonn, Tokyo, and Seoul. I present to you, Dr. Kurt Stanberry. Hi guys, thanks. So, thank, thank you to everybody for, for uh, coming to the session. Um, look, look, I'd like to say hello, I saw John Lane was signed. I'd like to say hello to John. What little I know, and, it, and, and it's very little, what little I know about Zoom or Blackboard or any of this kind of stuff all comes from John and, and, and his guys over there uh, where uh, they, they kind of educated people like me who, who are not very technically savvy about how to do this stuff. If, by the way, if I mess up on anything here, let me apologize in advance. I'm still getting uh, uh, my... Uh, uh, comfort level with Zoom up. So uh, uh, at any rate, so I thought that, that I'd visit with you a little bit today about um, what it's like to author an OER textbook and, and then adopt it and use it in the classroom, okay? So um, I teach both in the MBA program and the undergrad BBA program. And uh, I've been doing that as you, guys can probably tell for quite a while, um, 45 years in, in total. And, and so at the early stage of my career, I, I authored a couple of co-authored a couple of traditional textbooks. Um, and, and so it, it's been quite interesting to, at the latter stage of my career, to co-author a couple of OER textbooks. And so it gives me the perspective of the traditional thing, and you know the the new stuff. Okay, so so I've written the the two textbooks that, that I authored for OpenStax. OpenStax is a publisher at Rice University. Okay, it, uh, they're a project that that has backing from a number of foundations: the Bill and Melinda Gates Educational Foundation a number of other uh, national foundations, corporations, universities. So OpenStax is a, a, a successful 
OER project that was started at Rice. It's still housed at Rice, but obviously its, its books are used all over the world. It does, by the way, both some K-12 books and higher ed books, okay? Um, and uh, it, its goal has been to, 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 to try to address the, the whole uh, issue of uh, student ability to afford materials, okay? And so everything at OpenStax is in free electronic form, okay? I'm gonna show you this in, in, later on in the presentation, but, but OpenStax is, it's free without limitation, okay? And, and so uh, if, if I might, and I'm not a spokesperson for OpenStax, it's just, it's a good project. Um, they've saved about a billion dollars in textbook fees worldwide, okay? A billion dollars in the last eight years. Okay, it, their, their books are used at 60% of all the colleges and universities in the United States. So their impact is very significant. And, and if you ask me, in my opinion, they're really just getting started, okay? Because a lot of, a lot of faculty members, uh, frankly, haven't really yet uh, wholeheartedly adopted the, the, the OER concept. So, so those numbers seem big, a billion dollars over eight years, but I think they'll get, get a lot bigger. So let me talk a little bit about authoring a, a textbook, okay? Uh, one, of the, one of the things that, and I don't mean this to get sort of too, let me move this down here if I can so everybody can see it. I don't mean to get too sort of uh, into the weeds here on the way higher education faculty work and get promoted and get rewarded and that kind of stuff. But, but OER faces a bit of, a, a, of an uphill battle in, in this regard, with regard to finding authors. So, so, so by the way, the business ethics textbook that, that I co-authored is with a, a guy who's a faculty member at, at USC in California. And, and he and I have the same kind of outlook. Okay. The, as those of you who are faculty know, in, in higher ed, traditionally, over the decades, most faculty get promoted, uh, rewarded, if you will, based primarily on articles in peer-reviewed journals, okay? Particularly high quality peer-reviewed journals. And traditionally writing a textbook, authoring a textbook has not really been given very much credit because they thought, well, the faculty member is gonna make a lot of money writing the book if it gets adopted at a number of schools. And so their reward is financial and so over the last 50 years or so, textbooks haven't quite been given the credit. Now, here's the way OER works. Here's the way OpenStax works. The compensation for it is relatively minor, okay? The, they pay you a small fee and compared to traditional books, it's a very small fee to, to author the materials and and there's no royalty. That that's it's it's, it's a one-time upfront fee, very small, and that's the only compensation. So when you author an, an OER textbook, you're really doing that for the intrinsic value of contributing to the profession. I would like to see long term, and I, and I can say this because. I'm obviously at the end of my career, right? As opposed to the beginning, but, but what factored into my decision to author an OER textbook was the fact that, that I was at the stage of my career where I could do that. And, and I don't say this in order to, to in any way uh, 
toot my own horn, but but because of my longevity, I, I'm a tenured full professor who, who, who has held an endowed chair. Therefore, I wasn't, if you will, kind of tied to the system of getting tenure and getting promotion and that kind of stuff. I was already at, at the end of my career at the beginning. One of the challenges is getting young faculty to write OER textbooks because if we don't, in the university environment, if we don't count it as much as we do peer reviewed journal articles, then it's harder to get faculty to buy in to do it. And it's harder to get, to, to get them on board by saying, hey, but you're doing something for the students, you're doing something for the profession, you're, you're, you're giving back to your profession. So anyway, enough on that. By the way, writing an OER textbook is much more like writing a journal article. It's lots of teamwork. There are multiple co-authors. There's a very, very rigid review system. Our books were sent out to many blind reviewers at many different universities who, who gave input. And it, it's, it's a, a, and then we revised it, say a second round, another revision. We work with editors. OpenStax happens to contract with, with, with a company called WiseWire that, that, that does a lot of, of textbook editing. And, and, and they, they have a great team. They have a video team and they have a, 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 a writing team and they have an editing team and they have uh, uh, all kinds of people. So you really, you get the, it's a good team. You get the opportunity to work with a big team and you really go through a lot of, of peer review analysis before the text is ever published. So that's kind of a quick summary of, of what it's like to be an author of an OER textbook. So let's talk about adopting one. There's a few advantages, I believe, to OER textbooks. They're they're instantly online, so they're very easy to preview. I know all of us in academics now with the big publishers. You can use you can go to you can use Vital Source, right? So if you're looking at a at, at a McGraw Hill or a, a Pearson or you know whoever, they'll they'll arrange for you to eventually get that online through Vital Source, but still it takes a few emails here and there and a permission and this and that and the other thing. With OER books at OpenStax, they're instantly accessible. They're online. You can go online today and look at any OER textbook you want to. There's the whole book. And so it's very quick and easy to preview it to see if it meets your needs. The other thing is because they're free, they're very easy to customize, if you will. So, so I encourage faculty who are considering adopting OER textbooks to not necessarily always look for the perfect fit. I, I sometimes in my 45 year career have worked with a lot of faculty on textbook selection committees and somebody might say, well, that book's not perfect for my course. So that book's not exactly 100%. Well, well, the way it works OER is, since they're free, you could use parts of, of multiple different textbooks if you wanted to for your course to satisfy your needs. And so it's always a balancing act when you're thinking about adopting an OER textbook, remembering, keeping in mind that you're giving the students a free resource, okay? And so I encourage faculty to be flexible, to be kind of willing to adopt the book, even if they don't think it's 100% perfect for them, because, well, frankly, no book's 100% perfect for any faculty member, but, but the reality is that you can customize them. Okay, you can add content, that kind of thing. So I think the process of deciding to adopt an OER textbook is easy as long as you're flexible. All right, let's talk about using one. Most of the textbooks that, for example, the, 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 the two books that I've co-authored 
have a, a cartridge, okay? In this case, what, what OpenStax did is they contracted with, with other people at Houston Community College, at Sam Houston State and other places to prepare the cartridges that would instantly be downloadable into Blackboard or Canvas or whatever your LMS is. So it's really easy to, to put it in place. And one of the things I like about the cartridges is it, it downloads the entire ebook. It also then places the, the, the ebook chapter by chapter by chapter into, the, into Blackboard or Canvas. So for example, I do a chapter per week. So I have, let's say as an example, 15 weeks, 15 chapters. It, it loads a chapter into each week's content for you automatically, okay? So, so that process is, is, is easy. They also tend to come with the whole compendium of ancillaries, okay? So, so, so uh, my business ethics textbook, it comes with a test bank. It comes with slides. By the way, the slides get downloaded too as part of the cartridge, okay? So, so it's not, here's what I'm saying. And by the way, I know all of the McGraw-Hill books and, 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 and Pearson books, I know they all do that, but those books are $300 books, okay? What I, what, I, what I wanna tell people is that just because you're going with a free OER textbook doesn't mean it's some bare bones, no frills, no ancillaries deal, okay? It's for a faculty member, it, most of them come with the full package, just like the expensive books do, okay? The electronic book, is very easy to use. The students have the capacity to highlight it. They have a capacity to search it for a word or a phrase. They have the capacity to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, to highlight it and save the highlighting. It's very easy for the students to use it. And I'm gonna demonstrate in just a minute. Uh, and, and the books, by the way, are quickly, and easily updated, okay? So, so we have a system where people send in comments or questions, the editor contacts the faculty, we can update or, or edit or change an electronic book instantly, okay? So, so it's very uh, easily updated. They offer tutoring centers, like for example, uh, uh, like some of the other publishers do. So, so, uh, and they also, by the way, offer discounts with other educational software publishers for things like uh, uh, turning in homework, automatically graded homework assignments, stuff like that. All right, so here are the two books that, that, I, that I authored, and I want to demonstrate to you how, how one of them works. Okay, so let me go back here, guys. I need to do a new share here and all right does everybody see does everybody see the book there okay good all right so so this is my business ethics book and by the way just to give him credit here, here's Stephen Byers is the other guy I wrote it with all right so this is what the students this is what you could see if you went to it just online. And, and so if you, for example, you click on view online, by the way, I should add, here's another thing I like about these OER books. You can do it online or offline. <coughs> At no cost, the student can download a PDF and have that PDF on their computer or their iPad or tablet or whatever they use so they can read the book offline. Some people think, I don't want to adopt an OER book because I don't want my students to have to be online all the time. They don't have to be online. They can download it. They can bring their computer to the classroom. Back when, we, if we have classes again, but we'll pretend that in the fall, we're going to have live classes again, right? So, so the students have access to it offline. That's, that's free, by the way. Okay, so, so anyway, if I click view online, 
then here's the book. I'm going to go to one of the one of the sections that, that I that I worked on, okay, and just demonstrate why I think students like it, okay. So, um, let me move this if I can back up, kind of out of the way here, guys. All right, so. So here's a uh, here's an example of some business executives, some leaders, and their position on business ethics. And one of the things that I like about the book is it's very interactive. So the student can be reading the book if I assign them to read. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. <coughs> This is a section on, on Mary Barra. Mary Barra is, is the first female CEO ever of General Motors. And she's the one that stepped up and took ethical responsibility for General Motors ignition problems, okay? And she was particularly ethical, more so than some of the male CEOs that preceded her. So anyway, here's what they can do. They can read about it. Then they can click on this link the C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs program. And the link opens, and 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 so in this case, uh, I let me do a. Uh, can you can you guys hear this? Let, let me know, Shandra. Right, can the you hear that? Capital and are a public service okay. of your television provider, C-SPAN. So created by cable. Mary Barra, and I'm the chief. Here's executive an interview. Uh, with her before the US Congress. Congress was doing a, an investigation into auto safety. Here she is testifying before Congress related to that. And so- Officer of General Motors. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. More than a decade ago- So, anyway, so what I think the students like is that it's not just a dry textbook. As they're using it, they can click on videos and it instantly opens the video link form. The same is true with documents. So for example, for this, I have a link to a document that, that ended up being the report that Congress made on auto safety and CEOs accepting ethical responsibility for them. That would be too long to include in the textbook. So, so with interactive live links, students can get access to a variety of, of types of materials instantly, okay? So, so, anyway, so let, me, let me sort of uh, conclude with a couple of comments and, and, then, and then I'll take questions. So here's my final slide, if everybody can see that. So, here are what I think the benefits are. Number one, it's free. I've been, as I indicated to y'all before already, and not to be redundant, but I've been teaching a really long time. And I can't tell you how many hundreds of students I've had over the years who I have been able to, to clearly identify as not having the textbook. And that's because they can't afford it. It isn't because they don't want the book. If they got a free book, of course they want the book. It's because they can't afford the book. So, so we all need to, I think, open our minds to a way to get our students free access. Even if, even if students have the book, Sometimes they don't get it till three or four weeks into the semester because their financial aid was delayed and they couldn't they couldn't get the money to buy the book or whatever. So, so it, it's I think the number one thing is it's free. By the way, if they want a written book, they get a low cost print book. Uh, OpenStax will send them. I think it's like ten bucks. They'll send them a written book. Okay, if they want to have a written one. All right, ten or fifteen bucks, and. I consider them to be extremely engaging. I believe that it increases student engagement because of the interactive nature. Right? From the faculty point of view, 
It's easy to use, plug and play. It's updated quickly. You can use it online or offline. So, so to sort of conclude my, my presentation and then I'll answer any questions anybody might have. I think OER has a lot to offer students and faculty both from a practical point of view. So I'll, st I'll, I'll stop there. And Sandra, if anybody had questions, or, and I don't know how, if, if they're gonna send them to you by chat, I'll answer them. Yes, if anybody has any questions, we are out of time though. Uh, but if you do have any questions, just let me know. Uh, okay, so I have one that says, Dr. Stanberry, thank you for demonstrating the book. My question is in producing the book, do you have support from other team members or professional staff? Also, how do you address efforts to ensure accessibility standards are met? Okay, so, so the answer is yes, it was a great team. I had a lot of support, okay? Uh, the, the last part of that question was what? Uh, how do you address efforts to ensure accessibility standards are met? Well, if it's accessibility, it, it's free. Everybody gets it free. It's, it's I mean, it's 100% across the board free access. If that, I don't know if that addressed the question, but but let's, let's there's a lot of questions and I screwed up by not not leaving more time. So let me let me answer. Go ahead. Uh, in terms of accessibility, in terms of Section 508. Good question. Sorry. Yes, of course I should have. Uh, so so, uh, so the the quick answer is that that they have a department that's working on that right now. And, and, and so uh, if, if I use a video and I have a, a student that needs an ADA accommodation, then what, what I'm doing right now is using Camtasia because Camtasia will, will do the, uh, they'll put in the uh, in essence, the script on it. Okay. On, on those videos for the book itself, OpenStax offers something, but but I'm not quite sure what that is because I haven't had to deal with that yet. I'm sorry, that's a that's a halfway answer, but let me answer some more questions before our time. Uh, how gone. long? How long did it take to put the book together? Uh, start to finish a year. Okay. Last question: Did OpenStax approach you or you them? Uh, I know OpenStax approached me. Um, I. I uh, uh, I've been doing this a long time, and and, and so uh, they approached me. Okay, but right. but I should say they're open to new ideas. They're always looking for new topics. So if you have a topic that you think would be good, you could pitch it to OpenStax. They are always accepting new proposals. Wonderful. Okay, guys. Um. We are out of time. Dr. Stanberry, thank you so much for your presentation. Hey, listen, well, let me, I really let me, let me appreciate say it. I apologize for not leaving more time. My email is in the is in my uh, slide presentation. If you guys will email me those questions, I'll, I'll answer every question you have. And I apologize for not leaving more time. Absolutely. And the slides are available on, on that page. So you guys can assess them there. Thank you so much, Dr. Stanberry. I really appreciate you coming. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a good day. I appreciate it. Thank you. See you, David. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Chandra. We'll see you. Thank you.